can you tell us a little bit about the origins and how it came to be for television, but then a comic first as a way of introducing sure. that pilot? I, I got my start in um, development, and one of the things I learned in development is that people, I mean, it's nice to think that you can go out and pitch an original idea, but it rarely, rarely happens unless you're J.J. Abrams. Um, but I, I knew sort of working in development that what everyone really loved was established properties. So essentially books, just kind of material that has essentially proven itself. Um, and I knew that comic books were hot. So, you know, we decided rather than basically go the typical route you know, going out and trying to set it up, we would actually publish a comic book for, first. So we, we approached Dark Horse, they loved the idea, and we, we published those first four issues that we ended up uh, uh, collecting in a trade paperback. And that turned out to be like a great visual selling tool. Uh, and Paul, you wrote the pilot script, is that We right? co-wrote the pilot. co-wrote the pilot? Yeah. So talk about how, was that a challenge having written the comic book and then having to sort of revamp that no, introduction? No, and, and in fact, if you read the comic book and then watch the show, it's it's almost word for word. I mean, there is a lot of dialogue that's in the comic book that was that translated directly into the pilot. Um, Joe wrote the comic book. I don't really know comic book format, so mm -hmm. so that was a bit that was a bit weird. Yeah, it's very me. different. It is a different mm -hmm. format. But when but when you see it translated, you realize you know it. What one of the things he we, as Joe mentioned one of the thing, one of the great things about the comic book is it's essentially a storyboard for the pilot because we didn't veer, veer from it. Um, at all, really, and even visually, even the visual design is, is similar. It's not exactly the same. Obviously, the sets are not the same, and everything. But uh, even some of the characters kind of look the same. We so from a selling standpoint, that's great because people literally get a visual representation of. And they and the only question we ever got was, "Is it going to look like this? Is this?" And we would say, "Yes, this is it. This is what we intend to do," um, which helped sell it, but also helped guide a lot of the creative sort of energy because it's not just us right there's a lot of people involved so that was having the comic book there was a was a great help in that so everybody sort of got it right away they got the aesthetic they got the the sort of the vibe behind it because it's in the comic book and it translates directly into the pilot now that being said though is there a point of divergence where people might who have read the comic and might be slightly spoiled a la Game of Thrones, are they going to be? Well, the, com the comic only lasts for the first right. two episodes, essentially, after that. And even in the second, it, the pilot is very much the comic book, I think. It's the first two issues, yeah. essentially, right? The second episode starts to veer a little bit. It's, it still follows the basic plot. It's, it's a little bit different. And then after that... All bets are off. All bets are off, yeah. <laughs> One of the other interesting casting choices was Melissa O'Neill as two, yep. where she's coming from a, a stage background. Mm -hmm. how, how, did it, how did that happen, and what do you think that will maybe lend to her role? You know, she's never done television before, so she's very raw, but the audition was unbelievable, and we thought, wow, this is a, you know, a star in the making, and we heard that, that she had auditioned for something else recently and come very close. Um, and so we cast her, and she's been fantastic. And you'll be ready for the musical episode. Isn't yeah. It? Yes. In fact, actually, I made a joke about that because I also um, I, think I got they're all pretty good. Singers, I got video, actually. yeah, of, of them on 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 location. It was like the guys. I think Anthony, Alex, Roger, and Mark all singing uh, between takes. And uh, apparently, Zoe Zoe Palmer, our android, sang during a uh, an episode of Lost Girl. And then you know, I said the only person I don't know is Joe Dell. And then Alex, who plays four, sent me a. I don't know, like a a, um, a link of Jodell singing <laughs> online, and I thought, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> we're all set. Season five, season five. It's one of the yeah. first things we do whenever <laughs> we're working on a new show is we think about when we can work that musical yeah. episode in. We never really get around to it, but yeah. we always <laughs> talk about it. What I love as as cold as it has been filming out in the winter. What I love being outside in the badlands. That's where I'm missing mm. and feel. I think it, it's their home. That's where it feels like home for them. They don't settle in defiance really.